Good evening, everybody. Um, it's never an easy task uh, following such an uh, accomplished speaker as, uh, as Joe, uh, especially when he's talking about something that he's so passionate about, and uh, clearly major events is one of those things. Um, I'm delighted to have the opportunity to do so, however, and potentially to present from a slightly different perspective. Uh, that's a Cardiff city region perspective. Um, I aim to cover the following ground. The generic economic context of events, um, the importance of the visitor economy, the importance of events to that economy, the value of positive brand association, the visitors' experience of Cardiff and the opportunity to showcase the city, and the need for the Welsh Assembly Government to recognise business tourism as an investment promotion tool. As Derek said earlier, I'm the Managing Director of Cardiff & Co, uh, the public-private partnership that promotes the Cardiff City region as the ideal place to work, live, invest, meet, study, visit, shop and play. So it's very much uh, destination marketing in its broadest sense. It's this holistic view of marketing of, of Cardiff and the wider South East Wales area, my in-depth involvement with events of all kinds, plus our strong commercial ties with the private sector, that puts me in a good position to address the topic of this debate tonight. But before I do, a bit about the Cardiff city region economy. Over the longer term, Cardiff has been doing well compared with other locations. Whilst the gross value added in Wales is only 74% of the UK average, the Cardiff and the Vale figure is around 106%. Cardiff is widely recognised as a key driver of the Welsh economy and is part of a wider city region that includes over 1.4 million people 70,000 of whom commute into Cardiff each day from outside. Priority sectors for Cardiff include the media and creative industries, as Joe said earlier, professional financial services, retail, biotech, construction, and IT. And these sectors have exciting futures ahead, ahead of them. Not least in the short term, uh, the media and creative sectors will see this summer the opening of the new media drama village uh, in Porth Tiger down Cardiff Bay. And in the longer term, the professional financial services sector will see the development of a new central business district in the centre of Cardiff, which will be pump primed with £60 million of public investment from both the Welsh Assembly Government and Cardiff Council. So what impact do visitors have on Cardiff and its economy? Well, the STEAM survey, or the Scarborough Tourism Economic Activity Monitor, as it's less commonly known, uh, thankfully, um, identifies the economic impact of tourism on Cardiff. The last survey was completed in 2009, and the headline findings show the significant growth across all main areas. For example, the number of tourists visiting the city grew from 10.8 million in 2004 to 14.7 million in 2009. That's 14.7 million people a year. The number of jobs supported by those tourists rose to over 11,000 in 2009. And the total expenditure rose to 703 million pounds. 703 million pounds, that's a heck of a lot of money. Big money, lots of people, and lots of jobs. So in that case, do we really need events? Well, yes, in my opinion. Cardiff's tourist economy, which supports a range of jobs across different sectors, already relies to a great extent on events. Indeed, events probably account for a significant proportion of the growth in visitors numbers that the city has seen. After all, it's no coincidence that the major growth in visitor numbers has occurred since 1999 when the Millennium Stadium was opened. Just let's look at the last three years. 2008 saw the Heineken Cup final come to town and Madonna start her world tour in Cardiff. So picking up on Joe's theme earlier about the profile, the media profile, what a fantastic thing that Madonna was opening her world tour in Cardiff. 2009 saw the Ashes come to town for five days of play. You too played the Millennium Stadium and so did they take that. 2010, as Joe says, saw the Ryder Cup come to the Celtic Manor and the mass, vast majority of fans come to stay in Cardiff. Mamma Mia came to the Wales Millennium Centre, and the Armed Forces Day paraded through the city. And 2011 
Well, this year we'll see another Heineken Cup final in May, but this time we'll see the Amlin final too. Rugby League's Millennium Magic returned in February, and the British Speedway Grand Prix returns to the Millennium Stadium in June for the 11th consecutive year. And take that to come in again, too. So what haven't I mentioned? Well, there's a little matter of the Six Nations Rugby, Autumn Internationals, International Football, high-end opera, such as the Ring Cycle at the Wales Millennium Centre, One Day Cricket, and Cardiff Council's programme of events, including the Great British Cheese Festival, which is growing year on year, the International Food and Drink Festival in the Bay, and many more besides. And next year, well, Cardiff literally kicks off the Olympics uh, with the football at the Millennium Stadium. So is it any wonder that our visitor numbers have grown to such an extent? There's increased demand and therefore increased income for the city as a whole. I think that's clear. But there's also been movement on the supply side. In retail, Cardiff has a new £675 million St David's shopping centre and has moved up to fifth in the UK retail rankings according to Experian. And in the first year, 36 million people visited the St David's Centre, um, generating a spend of over, over £1 million a day. However, in population terms, Cardiff, rightly, should rank between 10th and 12th in the UK retail rankings. It therefore relies to a certain extent on people coming here to shop from outside the core city region, catchment area, many of whom will be coming because of one event or another. There's also been a supply side shift with hotels. Since 99, the city has seen an increase of almost 60% in the number of service bed spaces available thanks to the construction of a number of new hotels across the city. This increase means that we now have almost 9,000 bed spaces in the service sector and a further 6,000 in non-service. So that's almost 15,000 bed spaces in total. And these bed spaces need to be filled. So how is the hotel sector doing? Well, the hotel sector's preferred performance measurement is REVPA, revenue per available room. After a few years of growth, or at worst, lower than average declines in REVPA, Cardiff is entering choppy waters, highlighted by some conflicting pieces of data. The most recent STR global figures for Cardiff show REVPA down 9% in February 2011 compared with 2010. And on a year-to-date basis, the REVPA shows a 6.6% decrease. But does that mean there are fewer people coming to Cardiff? Well, no. There are actually more rooms being sold in Cardiff this year than last. So why is REVPA declining? Well, partly because consumers are looking for better deals and are holding out for them, even if it means that they might not make the event that they want to come to and partly because there have been some big new entrants into the hotel market, offering large numbers of rooms at very competitive rates. So should we panic? No. Should we be looking for ways in which demand and spend can be sustained and hopefully increase? Well, clearly, yes. That's why Cardiff & Co. Um, developed the Cardiff Commitment in partnership with the Millennium Stadium, the Cardiff Hoteliers Association, and ourselves, clearly. The commitment sets aside 20% of the city's hotel rooms at reasonable rates for the ticket buyers of events we're trying to attract to the city or events we're trying to safeguard. The commitment has played a particularly important role with the British Speedway Grand Prix at the Millennium Stadium. People attend from across the world, but particularly Eastern uh, Europe and Scandinavia, to cheer on their favourite riders. The Cardiff commitment has been key to addressing some of the concerns the organisers had back in 2009 and safeguarding the event for Cardiff for the length successive year. And I think that's the sort of event we want to see, events that keep on coming back to, to Cardiff. Hopefully, um, I've established that events are important to Car the Cardiff city region, that their prevalence in Cardiff over the last 10 years helps account for the meteoric rise in the Cardiff's visitor numbers, visitor spend, and the jobs generated, and that the supply side has grown in parallel and now needs to be sustained. But what about the softer dimensions like brand positioning and showcasing the destination? I'll quickly cover brand positioning first. Some brands are widely perceived as having aspirational qualities. Take uh, some of the Ryder Cup 2010 partners, for example, BMW, uh, Emirates Airline, Rolex. Each has that quality feel about it. 
and really echoing what uh, Joe said earlier, together with the Ryder Cup brand itself, Wales will have benefited in some almost impossible to calculate type of way from being positioned alongside them all, particularly after managing everything apart from the weather so superbly well. However, the direct economic benefits also need to be key to the investment decision. Wales can't live on brand alone. Turning to showcasing Wales, or at least Cardiff in the context of what I'm going to say, first some feedback from the Cardiff Visitor Survey 2009. Of the 1,282 people who were randomly selected for face-to-face -face interviews between June and September 2009, 97%, 97% said their visit had been either very enjoyable or enjoyable. Only 1% were disappointed with Cardiff compared with their expectations. 83% agreed that Cardiff was a great place for events, with only 1% disagreeing. 95% said they had been made to feel welcome, only 2% disagreed. And finally, 99% said that they would recommend a visit to Cardiff to someone else. Only 1% said probably not. So wh what am I getting at? What am I trying to say? Well, events are a fantastic opportunity to draw people into Cardiff and Wales, by virtue of their interest in the event, if nothing else. When here, they are extremely unlikely to take a dislike to the place and are far more likely to turn into advocates. Which brings me on to my last theme. Events can be an eclectic mix. I've mentioned a few sporting events and a few of the cultural variety. I haven't mentioned conferences until now. Conferences tick all the boxes. They bring direct economic spend into the local market. They help even out demand so that there are fewer peaks and troughs. They don't dominate the city in the same way as mega events do. They are diverse in nature and involve the public, private and voluntary sectors. But why am I mentioning them? Well, I believe that greater emphasis needs to be placed on business tourism, that is, the conference market. It offers a huge amount of opportunity to bring in large numbers of people for rel relatively modest levels of investment compared with some events. And provided the right sectors are targeted, they also offer us the unique opportunity to market Cardiff and Wales for investment in our priority sectors. What do I mean? Well, each industry sector has a number of conferences and exhibitions regarded as must-attend events. I believe there is scope for a greater emphasis to be placed on attracting such conferences with the aim of using them as an opportunity to showcase Cardiff and possibly further afield as an investment location. Let's not forget that we have a fantastic product, 99% of our visitors say so. We at Cardiff & Co are going to place much greater emphasis on researching and then targeting the conferences and exhibitions in the city's priority economic sectors. We do so with a dual aim of generating income and investment for the city. We'd call on the next Welsh Assembly Government to deploy part of its major event strategy budget in support of this agenda. The major event strategy has a very competitive budget at its disposal, as we heard. It compares favourably with competitors across the UK, particularly now that the RDAs are being ab abolished in England. As things stand, business tourism isn't an integral part of what is otherwise a very comprehensive strategy. I believe it should be, and I believe that WAG's various departments, particularly the Department for Economy and Transport, <coughs> should deploy the major event strategy in support of a business tourism-led sales effort. In conclusion, I believe there are strong economic reasons to pursue events for Cardiff and Wales. Indeed, Cardiff is somewhat reliant on them. I also believe that events offer pro positive brand associations and profile opportunities amongst those who watch from a distance. Used in the right way, this profile and brand association can help challenge misperceptions. But I also believe that we shouldn't underestimate the importance of simply getting people to come and see at first hand what Cardiff and Wales has to offer. Today's tourist might be tomorrow's conference goer and the day after's investor. So let's use these events as our most effective marketing tool. Let's not forget that our product does stand up to scrutiny. Let's use that to our advantage. Let's create advocates in and for Cardiff and Wales 
and let's create a lasting legacy. Thank you.